God Save White People, there's two books I want to recommend you grab if you plan on talking to these folks. Both of these books will help equip you to have a meaningful dialogue with the Hebrew Israelites. There's a few scriptures I suggest you familiarize yourself with. In Isaiah 49 6 it says God made Israel to be a light for the nations to be his salvation to the ends of the earth. And if you flip back to Genesis 12 3 you see where God promises Abraham that all people on the earth will be blessed through him. And a few chapters later God promises Abraham that he'll be the father of many nations. In his chapter on Hebrew Israelism Dr. Mason gives 15 examples of Gentiles who God saved throughout the Old and the New Testaments. Patriarchs like Adam, Noah, Abraham, and Isaac weren't Israelites because Israel didn't exist yet. Not to mention Job, Ruth, Rahab, and the Ninevites. And in the book of Acts you see people like Lydia, Cornelius, the Ethiopian eunuch, Greeks, and Samaritans all come into faith. In Matthew 28 16 Jesus tells his followers to go and make disciples of all nations. Clearly indicating that ethnicity is neither a requirement nor a disqualification for salvation. Cab Malone, if you know a black Hebrew Israelite or have ever been cussed out by one in a downtown metropolitan area, you understand the importance of this book. Black Church Empowered by Isaiah Robertson. It's a book about black church history, but there are plenty of apologetics nuggets in here as well. The Unseen Realm by Dr. Michael Heiser. How We Got Our Bible by Ralph Earl. It's about the canonization of scripture. The next one is The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. This was the very first apologetics book that I ever read. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Bahashim, Ruha Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you fellow believers, you other brethren. Shalom to the elect. So I want to go on this video not so much for the same old things that the Christians like to say, but for the sake of the video, I'll go into that. But the main reason why I'm doing this video, but we have to do it in an edification, is that it seems that Christians, you know, they've been hired, these hirelings, to write these books. <laughs> and all these books are is another form of Bibles, right? If you can't go into the Bible and show the person exactly what needs to be said, then why do you need all these other books if these persons can under these people can understand the words of the Lord? If the Spirit is working with the the uh, Christians or whoever you believe in that doctrine that you believe, why do you need to write books to try to get people to understand? Like you know, when I came into the truth, I didn't need to read extra books. Now there is books that lines up with prophecy and history. But I didn't put my face on a book, right? And put a name on a book and say this or that just to try to teach you how to debate debate against somebody else with a Bible. Now, if you get a book, you get a book that's written and you open it and you learn and you add into what, you know, according to the scriptures and they kind of work with it. There's not, nothing wrong with that. But why do you need a book, right, to try to convince other Christians, right, not to fall, so-called fall, for the Hebrew Israelite doctrine? It seems to me there's a lot of lack of faith. They don't believe. Now, us, we say, if you're going to, if you're a Hebrew Israelite and you understand what you understand, and you go and follow somebody else's book that carries you to and fro in every wind of doctrine, then the Lord just didn't want you. What are we going to do? Handcuff you and make you believe it? Our job is to try to convince you and to say, hey, this is wrong. Repent. Do not think that way. But we cannot stop you. And it seems that these people is actually using an occult tactic to try to keep uh, their followers. That's what it seems like to me. It's more of like an occultic tactic. Anyway, um, I want to go into Isaiah 49 and 6. And I'll just touch on it a little bit. All right, it says, And he, and he said, it, it, is, it, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the twelve tribes, well, let me say the tribes of Jacob, and to restore and to preserve Israel. Basically, with, through the elect, 
all of Israel will be raised up. So why didn't it say everybody? Be raised up and restored everybody. Well, there's a reason. I will also give thee for a light unto the Gentiles, which the original word was heathen men. Gentiles neither Hebrew nor Greek word. That thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. So you got to read that. I will also give thee for a light. Who is the thee? The Israelites. A light to the Gentiles, which really means to the heathen men, which it could be of heathen nations. Gentile, that's why they put that placement word there, a connecting word, or let me say a universal word. This comes from universalism through the Vulgate, by the way. And this is why they put that word there. Gentile, even Greek, Grecian. Grecian is just an Israelite that is a Greek-speaking Jew, which is a Hellenistic Jew. You know, that's all the Grecian is, right? Um, it says, let me go to the commentary. So there'll be a light unto the earth. So when you look at the stories of the Bible in situations with David and Joshua, right? And the kings of the earth, you know, just read all the stories of the Bible. Solomon, when he subdued, when they subdued the enemies, what did the enemies do? I was just reading a day with uh, uh, David and I believe it's the Ammonites, uh, the Edomites, I believe them, where they, he subdued them and made, and, and they served him. So it's not like that we're just going to go up and be Israelites and just chop off everybody's head and be murderers and just be hell on wheels. Well, in the beginning, there's going to be well, the scriptures say that there's going to be things that's going to have to happen to put the nations to beat them in subjection. Right. So let's go to the uh, comment commentary. I'm going to just read a short part because this is really long. Just to get to the point. It says this is the uh, Barnes Noble Barnes notes of the Bible. It says. It says, I will also give, just to the point, I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. Right? I will appoint thee to the higher office of extending the knowledge of the true religion to the darkened pagan world. The same expression and the same promise occurred in Isaiah 42 and 6 right so what is wrong with Israelites ruling the earth and the other nations are going to have to be right under but let's go a little bit further when you go to Acts 13 27 it says the same thing 13 47 when you look up the word Gentile it says probably from ethnos so they even saying probably it's 1484. It means a race and a tribe and a foreign one, right? A race and a tribe. So let's go. This is going to tie this all in. Let's go to Genesis. Um, let's go to Genesis, not Genesis, Salakia. Let's go to Acts 325. Now, Acts 325 is the precept that. Paul is reading out of Genesis 12 and 3 where it says through Abraham's seed all nations of the earth shall be blessed right ultimately all the nations of the earth see you got different blessings you have a blessing to be the Israelites and then you got also a blessing uh, where we had Ishmael who got his blessings right but let's see who this is talking about. Acts 3.25. It says, Ye are the children of the prophets and the covenant which God made of our for our fathers, of our father, with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. So when you go to this word kindred, it goes to patria, right? Which means a lineage running back to some progenitor or ancestry. A group of families, all those who is given people lay claim to a common origin. The Israelites who 
distributed into 12 tribes, which means different nations, descended from the 12 sons of, the, of, of Jacob. These were divided into families, which were divided into houses in a nation people. So going back to what she was saying about the nations, um, go teach and baptize in all nations. Well, we're going to go here to Deuteronomy, which that was cut right there. We're going to Deuteronomy 28, 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even unto the other. And thou shalt serve other gods. They are neither thou nor thy fathers have known and wood and stone. Now when you go to Leviticus 26, 33, right? It says, I will scatter you among all heathen. That word could have been Gentile too, by the way. And nations, because the other translation says, I will scatter you among all nations. And will draw out the sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. Right? All you got to do is look at the precepts. Right? Psalms 106 and 27 to disperse the offspring among the nations, Psalms 106 and 27, to overthrow their seed, uh, okay, through the nations, scatter them in the land. So basically, the Most High has scattered the Israelites amongst the nations. And uh, if I was going to go on in the video, I would go to Revelation 7 and 9. All nations, kindreds, peoples, and tongues. And the kindreds, again, says all 12 Israelites scattered amongst uh uh, deprived of all the nations of Israel. So when you see nations of Israel, or I will scatter thee amongst the nations, well, guess what? Deuteronomy 28 and 64. I will scatter thee amongst all nations from one end of the earth even to the other. Let's go to Galatians 4 because I believe they like to go to Galatians 4 or Galatians 3, 28, where it says Jew, Greek, male, female, you all one in Christ Jesus, right? These people are easy work, you know. Galatians 4 and 4, it says, But when the fullness of the time was come, Yahweh sent forth his son, Yahweh Shah, made of a woman, made under the law, proving that um, it is about the law. They had sex. And this woman, she also believes in the Trinity. I looked at a couple other clips when it clearly says that Yahweh Shah, the one you call Jesus, clearly says, no man nor the time of hour, not even him himself, but the Father only. So these people is giving the Most High a um, a delusional, or um, he's got a some form of issue where he doesn't know who he is really, or he's a multiple personality disorder is the best way I can put it. So they believe in the Trinity. They believe somebody came down and had sex with Mary. This is what they teach. So the, the Holy Spirit came and had sex with Mary, committing adultery on Joseph. And when that happens, he impregnated Mary just to impregnate and come back as himself as the Holy Three Trinity. So this is some wicked, sick doctrine. But anyway, made under law to redeem them that were under the law, right? that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God, it says God, Yahweh, have sent forth the spirit of the son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Right? So when he said, say the Lord's Prayer, where was the other, tw where was the, the tribes of heathens with the Lord when it came to that? When he said, you know, our Father which is in heaven. Right? Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir to God, Yahweh, through Yahweh Shah. Wait a minute. This is some crazy uh, uh, stuff where these people are saying, well, wait a minute, God gave it the, the promise, you know, the covenants and the promise, uh, covenants with an S, and the promise to uh, Israel, but somehow everybody else can get on board. These are the only people, this is another sick thing. These are the only people you see Eve will stand here, right? And she saw in the beginning had a bunch of, uh, They could some of them could have been Jake's, but in her mind, they were so-called white. And she would 
cape for them before standing up for our own. This is the mindset of these people. And this is how Christianity destroyed us. And this is why it's not working. Nobody wants to be a Christian anymore. The ones that are in there, it was such a big religion. That's why you'll still see a lot of viewers and a lot of followers. But the majority of it is pretty much down the crapper. This person is saying uh, ethnicity. Now, the ignorance of other Israelites, it's not about skin color. And they're mapping ethnicity with skin color. That's more ignorance in itself because it's not about skin color at this point. Not all about skin color. Don't get it twisted. Everybody look white ain't no Israelite. But you got a lot of Israelites that are scattered throughout throughout the world. Isaiah 11, 11. I, re, I will recover the remnant of the, the, the seed of Jacob. And as for the, um, the Israelites... Uh, Abraham wasn't an Israelite. Isaac wasn't an Israelite. They were all Israelites. Right? They had the law from the beginning. But wait a minute. The one you call Jesus um, was from the tribe of Judah. Let's get that real quick. Let's get that. This is easy work, but we, you know, we have to do it. Let's go to Hebrews 7 and 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Right? Because he came out of Judah. But Yahweh shot the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let's go over here to Ephesians 3 and 8. To me, this is Paul saying, this is called the purpose of the mystery, to me who am less than the least of all the saints the grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Yahweh which were the Israelites and you remember as I said Gentile is not even an original word and to make all see what is the fellowship and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages this might be a different translation yeah, this is a different translation, but it still says pretty much the same thing. Three and eight, um, uh, we read it so much, we can see when it's different. Unto me, whom less the saints, the least of all saints, is grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Yahweh, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. When we keep talking about the mystery, it tells you it's going to bring it to fold. Which from the beginning of the world have been hid in Yahweh, right? Who created all things by Yahweh Shai, says Jesus Christ. So if Yahweh Shai, the one you call Jesus, created all things, was he an Israelite back then? Was he a Jew back then? Was he a Hebrew back then? Yes, he was. He was always who he was. And the men that the, the elect and the other spirits that help create were all who they are. He have known you from the womb. You had laws already. You had oral laws, and then you had the physical law written. These Christians just don't know the Bible, man. You know, they're baiting you up to read these books just to get, you know, embarrassed. That's all I have on that, Shalom.